I've recently upgraded my Armatan Quad to version 1.6 of the firmware. It was 1.4 when it came and the self-level uh, doesn't normally get set up by uh, Chris, um, a gentleman that goes by Bob E. Pine on RC Groups who actually built this for me. Um, I had uh, quite a major crash, so I've ended up actually having to straighten one of the arms, um, it was that impressive. Uh, replace the motors with a slightly lower KV and um, putting new blades on it. But as part of that I've also updated the firmware on here to version 1.6. Now there's been improvements in the self-leveling in versions 1.5 but lots of improvements in version 1.6 of the firmware. So I wanted to put that on and try it out because flying FPV, having self-level turned on makes it a much easier experience and uh, means that it's much harder to crash but not impossible. So what I wanted to do was show you uh, version 1.6, give you an idea what the self-level looks like when it's turned on. First of all, we'll talk about what self-level is and isn't on the KK2 board, because I think it's important to go into this with your expectations set correctly, uh, because it isn't GPS or altitude hold, um, it's just about keeping this thing level. Secondly, I'm going to go through um, a couple of things I found when I upgraded to version 1.6 of the firmware. We won't spend too long on that, but I'll just mention a couple of points you need to be aware of. And finally, uh, we'll run through the three or four steps that you need to set this board up, which is about making sure the model's level, teaching the KK2 board what level feels like, and then test flying it and putting in any minor corrections into the settings on the board. And we'll talk about which settings are and kind of how, what the numbers look like. Um, so first of all, we'll talk about what self-level is and self-level isn't. Um, all self-level is on the KK2 board, and I say all because when it works it's still fantastically cool, is it just keeps the model in level flight. So when you let go of the sticks on the transmitter and the model is flying to one side, it will right itself. Now what it won't do is it won't uh, apply any corrections, so if it's sliding to one side in the air it won't stop doing that, but it will mean that you can um, have a much more controllable machine in version 1.6 of the firmware, the controls don't feel as um, woolly as they did in previous versions for the self-level because it used to be when you turned it on one of two things would happen in mo uh, very commonly what would happen the model would dip and fly forward when you clicked it into self-level which is kind of um, the exact opposite of what you're after and uh, you had to be careful to make sure that you took off with self-level turned on and then it behaved a little bit better but if you tried to flick into self-level and you were were not level when you did it in flight um, or it, it was reading one of the accelerometers or gyros in a slightly odd way then it would take off in that direction. First time I actually used self-level I crashed it just because I was expecting this thing to remain level and uh, it didn't and I overcorrected and clicked it back into normal flight mode. So you know previous versions treat it with caution but I think even in version 1.6 you do have to be careful. Also, when you've got this turned on, it will not fly um, at the same height, so it, and it will not stay in one place. All it will mean is that if it's pushed around by the wind or um, starts to move around, it won't tip over and increase the speed it's going at. It'll just wander uh, and be pushed around by the wind, but maintain its attitude level in the sky. So if, if you know that that's what it's going to do, it's great. I find it's very useful when you're first learning with a quadcopter, it gives that extra level of stability. Um, it doesn't allow you to fly uh, aggressively, but that's fine, that's what um, turning self-level off allows you to do. And also for FPV I found it really good because it means that you can um, lose your orientation a bit more looking out of a camera sat on the top of the model. And having self-level means that if you just let go of the sticks, the model itself will um, sort itself out and all you've got to worry about is making sure you're not hitting anything to the side that you can't see through the camera or that you're not losing height and you're going to um, hit the ground. When you flash the board to a new version of firmware uh, be prepared because it will lose all of its settings. You'll have to set it up as a new board. Make sure that the propellers are off so if you have any um, uncommanded starts, the motors or anything weird happens then you're safe. You're going to have to set up the motor configuration, the P and I gain settings and the auto level settings of course which we're covering here 
and um, recalibrate the accelerometer. So you're going to have to do it from scratch. So be prepared to do that. Have a look at the other videos on the um, on YouTube and the web. Uh, RC groups have some great explanations of how to do that. And um, make a note before you flash the board of what settings you've got already so that you can just go through and you can put all those back in. To do the flash itself, you need a laptop computer, um, a Java-based program, so you're going to have Java based on uh, installed on your machine as well, and a special little cable that you can get from um, Hobby King. It's only about five bucks that will plug into the six leads and allow you to flash the firmware. So this is now version 1.6, and we'll um, we'll look at that now. So here we are actually looking at the model powered on in the safe mode. If I take it into armed and then take it out of armed, you'll see that um, what uh, the roll and pitch angle are, are set at. Uh, what we're going to do is play in the menus for self level settings. Um, P gain is 100, seems to work for me. P limit 20. I think they're default values, they seem to be fine. And then you've got the um, the roll and the pitch trim, which is what we're going to look at now, just to um, to see how they affect it sitting in flight. So, so just like you would click the trims on a control um, input on the radio, these allow you to put in a small correction. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk through what we did with that. But the first thing we're going to do is actually do something called um, accelerator. Um, accelerometer calibration. Now what it says is place the aircraft on a level surface and press continue. The flight control will then wait five seconds to let the aircraft settle down continue. Now it's important that when you do this it is actually level. So I'll show you how we do that. The way, the way I do this is using one of these little um, spirit levels. This one is actually one that's designed to be used to do fly bars and it's actually in one of my other videos but it's a nice little small um, spirit level that lets me check it's absolutely flat both front to back and side to side although you can't quite see it there once you're happy and what you tend to have to do is shim the feet with bits of paper until it's absolutely spot on then once you've got it spot on go into that menu hit continue it'll reset and then hopefully you can uh, unplug it and plug it back in. Recheck those settings on the display to make sure that when it is flat and level, the display is reading either zero, uh, minus one, or one degree uh, for both roll and pitch. And that means that the board has learnt what level is supposed to be. And that's the reference it will use and try and m maintain that attitude when you turn on the self level. So the first thing we need to look at is the actual um, way that the trims work. Um, this isn't documented very well anywhere that I could find. had to kind of figure it out by trial and error. But the way it works is that the, uh, the roll trim obviously corrects for any um, movement side to side and the, pitch, uh, the trim for the pitch um, trims it for front and back. So the way it works is that if, for example, the model is um, going forward gently when you put it into self-level, um, obviously confirming that, that you have the board, um, the accelerometer set uh, when it's absolutely level um, uh, in what we've just done and what we've just seen. If it's moving slightly forward, then you'd put into the trim pitch a negative number. If it was rolling backwards uh, towards you then actually you'd put in some positive pitch and that would then trim out that um, that flight. So what we'll do is I'll actually show you a little bit of video with um, both of those sub trims at zero and actually show you how it flew. So here we are in the back garden um, just flying the model uh, sun's just coming over to the end of the garden um, I'm not sure if you can see here but what's happening is when I take my finger off the sticks it's gently moving forward and if I pull it back and while it's gently flying backwards I recenter the stick again it will slow down, pause briefly in the air and then push forward again. There doesn't appear to be any side to side movement which is good so what I need to do is I need to put in some um, positive trim pitch in the um, self level menu to make sure that it, uh, it's cancelling out that slight forward movement. So what we'll do is we'll land it 
and we'll put in a little bit of um, trim. So now we've flown the model with both the trims at zero, what we'll do is we'll actually turn on um, this, the model. We're going to go and set um, a correction for that bias towards forward flight. So we'll go into self-level settings, we'll go down to the trim pitch, because it's trim we need, because it's forward to backwards movement. We'll click on change, and what we'll do is we'll set that to 55. Okay, so set on 55, what we'll do now is we'll go out and fly it again and uh, see if that's corrected the pull forward or whether that's too much. So as you can see in this flight it's not having the same pull forward that it was before. Now if anything it's actually wanting to move backwards slightly. That means 55 is slightly too much. So I'll land it, we'll bring it back inside again and we'll reduce that value a little bit and see what difference that makes. So here we are, back in the menu, we'll go back into menu, self-level settings. This time what we'll do is that trim pitch 55 is obviously too much, we'll set it down to, let's go about 30, see, just kind of halfway-ish. Um, what we'll do is we'll try this now and see if that uh, flies any better. So as we can see it flying, it's almost there, it's almost there, it just has that slight pull backwards so again we're, we're within five or ten points of the correction so what we'll do is we'll land it and we'll do one final correction and then hopefully we should be spot on so we'll do one final correction we'll go into the menu self level settings change the trim pitch I think about about 15 is probably going to do it actually so with 15 set we'll go back outside and try one last time so here it is hovering um, I'm putting in a couple of slight corrections here but what I'm finding is there's no bias towards any one side I'm not feeling like I'm constantly having to keep the pressure on the stick in one direction to keep it hovering in one spot it's pretty much spot on So, in summary, if you're interested in self-level, either because you're starting out or it's um, something that you're interested in to help you with FPV, then the steps are relatively straightforward. First of all, I recommend that you upgrade to version 1.6 of the firmware. Um, in my experience, uh, the, the self-level on 1.6 versus 1.4 and 1.5 is much, much better. It's worthwhile doing. Once you graded the firmware you're going to have to reset the board up so make sure you keep a note of all your settings once you've set it up recalibrate the accelerometers make sure the, the board is absolutely spot on level front to back side to side and reset it once you've done that take it out and fly it see which bias um, you have whether it's side to side um, front to back land it and then put in the correction as per the diagram so if it's rolling slightly to the right on self level fine going to the menu going to the self level settings going to the um, uh, acceler accelerometer trim roll and put in a positive number and hopefully from the kind of um, drift that you're seeing in my video you can see that you know a very small amount of drift you're looking at 10 20 points either positive or negative depending on the direction um, if it's quite um, significant I would say that if you're looking over 60 or 70 points of correction double and triple check that you've actually set it up to be nice and level. I hope that's useful for somebody. Um, any questions or comments, please post and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.